welcome to The Print. You're watching State Draft with me, Akshya Nath, Senior Assistant Editor with The Print. Today, we will be talking about from MGR and AMMA to EPS, how line of sale of Palani Swami made AIADMK crown his own. The mode was mutinous as thousands of all India Anna Dravaramunitra Karagam AIADMK cadres swelled at Chennai's little mound to stage a massive demonstration against Tamil Nadu's Dravari Munitra Karagam DMK government. But the atmosphere suddenly shifted to jubilation when AIDMK chief Edapadi K. Swami's car approached the venue. As the leader's silver Innova came to a halt, the crowd spontaneously erupted into fervent chants of Selakta Singam, Karaga Puduchailala, Varangala Mudala Mitchell, and Anna Edapadiyar, which translates to Line of Salem, General Secretary of the Party, Future Chief Minister, Brother Edapadi. Amid the chants, Edapadi Palani Swami or EPS, as he's popularly known, emerged from his car, smiling at the party carders, alternating between namastes and flashing the victory sign, a gesture that also signifies the party symbol of the two leaves on a stem. Earlier seen as a license between late AIDMK chief Jayalalitha and party carders, 69-year-old EPS has been cementing his position in the organization ever since the Supreme Court gave the go-ahead for him to continue as General Secretary this February, dismissing the challenge of ousted party rival O Panir Selvam, OPS. And as EPA strengthens his grip on the party, the AIADMK itself is undergoing a change in its character. From being led by larger than life movie stars turned politicians, Purachitaleva, that is revolutionary leader MG Ramachandran or MGR, and the revered Amma, mother J. Jayalalitha, it is now embracing the stewardship of Annan brother EPS, a chief who positions himself as an equal, although he is held in high reverence. Since the demise of Jayalalitha in 2016 and his elevation to the post of chief minister the following year, EPS has been viewed by Carders as a man who held a large section of the party together through a period of factional turmoil. At the Monday rally, when asked why EPS captured the imagination, party workers described him as being close to Carders, someone who remembers their names and attends their personal celebrations. They also praised his ambitious target to build the party by ramping up its membership numbers and his effort to connect top leaders to the grassroots. Unsaid by the workers, but also worth mentioning, is the AIADMK's amended bylaws. Through these, EPS has ensured that only faithful old-timers can climb to the top or have a say in who does. These bylaws amended in July 2022 were taken on record by the Election Commission last month. At the protest in Little Mount, the carders are cheerful and say they now have clarity about the affairs of the party. There were several hurdles that came in the AIADMK's way and also for EPS personally, but he overcame it all and has proved to be a strong leader like MGR and Amma, said former minister and AIADMK's Women's Wing Secretary B. Valarmati speaking to the print. Nonetheless, political analysts point out that EPS still faces imminent threats. As the opposition party in Tamil Nadu since 2021, the AIDMK has been seen as overly reliant on its ally Bharti Janta Party BJP, with which it has a long been in odds. Furthermore, despite EPS's reputation as Salem strongmen with backing from the Gaundri community in the Western Tamil Nadu, the AIADMK sway among the influential Tevar community may be at risk due to the newly minted alliance between ousted AIADMK leaders, OPS and TTV Dinakaran. Speaking to the print, author and political analyst Neela Kentanaris also highlighted that EPS is yet to command the kind of following that MGR or Jailalita did. EPS managed the party for four years for which credit needs to be given to him. He was a good manager of circumstances, but that is one thing and being a mass leader is another, said Neela Kantin. Political analyst G.C. Shekhar expressed similar reservations. EPS is still not all-powerful, said Shekhar and added, he is dependent on the support of others in the party to hold his position. As EPS entrenched himself as a key figure in Tamil Nadu's political arena, the print traces his ascent as well as obstacles he continues to face. In 1974, Edapadi K. Palani Swami, a 20-year-old from a family of farmers, joined AIDMK as a volunteer. 
However, it wasn't until after the demise of party founder MGR in 1987 that EPS caught the attention of Jayalalitha. For the 1989 state election, she nominated him as the Edda Party constituency candidate for the breakaway faction of the party she headed at that time. He won, but the party didn't. It took until 1991 for Jayalalitha to claim its CM's chair, but it wasn't until the fourth stint as Chief Minister for Jayalalitha two decades later that she officially gave APS, who has been steadily rising in the ranks of the party, a place at her table. Revered like a deity in a temple, Jayalalitha was someone that Carders could admire and worship, but from a distance. When she regained power in 2011, she personally handpicked a group of four cabinet ministers known as the Nalivar Ani or the team of four to act as a bridge between her and the party's cadres. These elite cabinet members were EPS, Natham Vishwanathan, R. Vaidilingam and OPS. Among these four, it initially seemed as if OPS was Jayalalitha's natural successor. He had temporarily served as chief minister in 2001-2002 when she was disqualified due to corruption charges and then again in 2014 when she was convicted in a disappropriate asset case. After her death in December 2016, it was again OPS who took the mantle of a CM for the third time. However, unless Shaker pointed out that even though OPS had taken centre stage whenever Jayalalitha was indisposed, EPS, a one-time Lok Sabha MP and four-time MLA then, was never far from the scene either. When Jayalalitha was ill and when OPS was given the portfolios handled by her, EPS too had gone along with OPS to meet the governor to make the changes in the cabinet. He was in the equation all along, pointed Shaker. In February 2017, just over two months after he took oath as Chief Minister, OPS resigned as a culmination of his roller coaster Dharma Yuddham against one time Jalalitha A and CM aspirant Sashikala after she was convicted in a disappropriate assets case. Although EPS and OPS had led different groups within the party at the time, they established a front against the then AIDMK General Secretary Sashikala and her faction, which included her nephew. TTV Dinakaran. Both Sashikala and TTV were ousted from the party. EPS and OPS then set up a dual leadership system for the AIDMK. In this arrangement, EPS became the chief minister and joint coordinator of the party, and OPS the deputy chief minister and coordinator. Jalalta was termed as the eternal general secretary of the party. A lot has changed since then. EPS is no longer CM, but he has taken charge of the party. After the AIADMK lost the 2021 state election, he pushed for a singular leadership in the party to strengthen his functioning. Uh, there was pushback from OPS, but it was now EPS who called the shots and enjoyed the support of most party office bearers and cadres. In June 2022, general council meeting, OPS was reportedly booed out of uh, the meeting. EPS was anointed as the party's rightful leader the following month. Soon thereafter, OPS and his aides were expelled from the AIADMK. The towering image of Jayalalitha for so long had conditioned people to not take EPS seriously, said Neela Kantin. But that was clearly no longer the case. The saga of EPS's ascent bears a few striking parallels to that of Jayalalitha's. Following MGR's death, his wife V. N. Janaki Ramachandran and her supporters claimed ownership of the AIADMK, while Jayalalitha, leading a breakaway faction, asserted that the true followers of the party should be with her. Similarly, when Jayalalitha died, different claimants to her political legacy emerged, including OPS and EPS. Much as how MGR's Janaki asserted her ownership, uh, of the party and even served as CM for 23 days, OPS also staked this claim but had a very short tenure. And much as how Jayalalitha accused Jan Ki of being soft towards Karnanadi, EPS criticized OPS for his alleged proximity to the DMK and even labeled him as a B team of the DMK. Another parallel that can be drawn is the poor performance of the AIA DMK in these two eras. In the 1989 state election, the fractured AIADMK got a drubbing, but Jayalalitha's faction outperformed Janaki's, with the former winning 27 seats over the latter's too. This gave Jayalalitha greater political credibility, and shortly thereafter, both factions were merged under her leadership. In the Lok Sabha elections that same year, AIADMK, in an alliance with the International Congress, achieved 
a resounding victory, winning 38 out of the 39 seats, returning the party to its former glory. Cut to the 2021 state assembly polls, the first after Jalalita's demise, these elections were a blow to the AIDMK, which secured only 66 of the 179 seats is contested from, of the total 234 assembly constituency seats. But the result also gradually shifted the dynamics within the party. While AIADMK won 32 out of the 54 seats in the Gounder nominated, Western Belt of Tamil Nadu, where EPS wields considerable influence, they only managed to secure 16 out of the 60 seats in the Thevar dominated Southern Belt, considered to be a stronghold of OPS. Moreover, between 2018 and 2022, several members of the OPS faction switched their allegiance to EPS, further reshaping the political landscape within the party. Today, EPS is forging his own identity as a leader. At Little Mount, he was swarmed by his party men from all sides. The stage he was to step onto was jam-packed with many senior party leaders, all of them pushing forward to greet their general secretary. He steadily reciprocated their greetings while also asking them to make way. EPS, it seems, is positioning himself as a common man, an unknown who has worked his way through the party ranks. His message is that he is one among them, said a senior former AIDN KMP, asking not to be named. Establishing a connection is one of EPS's strengths, according to most AIDMK leaders that the Prince spoke to. He's always there for the carders. If a party worker invites him to a wedding, a baby shower, a baby naming ceremony or such functions, he will try being there if he doesn't have a prior commitment, said Walagmati. AIADMK's organizational secretary, Adi Raja Ram, also described EPS as approachable. He's a man who loves talking about agriculture. He's a farmer at heart, said Rajaram while speaking to the print. He shared a personal incident where EPS, who had met Rajaram's family once, remembered them even after several months, a trait that is not common among many senior leaders, Rajaram had added. All of this is quite a far cry from Jailalita's persona as a leader. She was never closely surrounded by people due to her zealous security and larger than life image. Senior leaders and cadres were more likely to prostrate themselves before Jailalita than push their way towards her. And this, however, say EPS could take a leaf or two from Jailalita's book, emphasizing that her charisma and popularity were not solely due to her film star status, but also her hard work. She had the ability to capture the attention of the masses and it requires significant skill, thoughtfulness and understanding of politics, governance, media and what becomes viral in today's time, said Neela Kantin. EPS will have to learn and deliver on these aspects, otherwise he will risk being abandoned by his own supporters, Neela Kantin added. When MGR started the AIDMK, it attracted a record enrollment of 16 lakh cadres. By the time Amma departed, its strength was 1.5 crore. EPS now wants to take it to the next level. EPS has started a drive to make the cadres strength 2 crore. He's driving the party towards glory following the legacy of MGR and Jailalita, said AIDMK spokesperson Kuwe Satin. He added that EPS has three key focus ensure that the grassroots workers are able to climb the ladder, encourage more young to join the party and develop them into the next line of leaders and most importantly he has a clear roadmap in mind based on which clear decisions are taken without mincing of words. Also high on the agenda is electoral preparations for the 2024 Lok Sabha and 2026 state assembly polls. Party leaders said that EPS has held multiple meetings on this front. He has urged us to strengthen the booth committee and regularly conduct public meetings to stay connected with the people across the state, said former minister Walamati. The Supreme Court verdict of February this year came as a huge boost for EPS, ensuring he is firmly in the saddle as the general secretary of the party. The party's amended bylaws also ensure that EPS remains at the helm of affairs for the foreseeable future. The rules stipulate that anyone contesting for the post of General Secretary must be a party member for a continuous period of 10 years and have served as an office bearer at the party headquarters for five years. Further, the candidacy must be proposed by at least 10 district secretaries with another set of at least 10 district secretaries seconding it. Only EPS currently enjoys that level of support. 
EPS is currently fine high but analysts highlight a number of issues that could make it a bumpy ride AS Panni Selvam a fellow with the Chennai Ro- Roja Muttaiya research library pointed out that the court battle may not be over yet for EPS all the cases related to the party filed by Sashikala and OPS are still pending with not a single case fully resolved he said further over the past 2 years eps is preoccupation with the aid in case internal power struggle give the bjp and its president k anamalai an opportunity to amplify their presence in the opposition according to analyst gc shaker eps was absent without leave and anamalai took the lead shaker said and added but eps is now asserting himself as the opposition leader his recent media interaction on the spurious liquor issue showcases his aggressive side Earlier this month nearly 2000 people in Tamil Nadu lost their lives allegedly due to consuming tainted hooch leading to a political firestorm in the wake of this EPS had said at a press conference that the deaths could have been prevented if the state government had taken action on preventing the sale of spurious liquor the IIDM co also targeted the DMK over this issue in its Chennai protest rally in Little Mount The biggest challenge currently confronting EPS however is the alliance between OPS and TTV to take on the betrayers there is also speculation that they may meet Sashikala for a tie all three belong to the Tevar community an alliance therefore would result in a consolidated and influential Tevar group posing a threat to the AIADM case current food bank The former AIADMK MP quoted earlier in the story expressed his concern and he was saying that OPS TTV and Sashikala were playing caste based politics around 30 locations where the AIADMK had contested from uh, it was seen that TTV Dinakaran's Amma Makkal Munnetra Karagam had played spoiled sport but joining forces with them would lower the party's morale he added in the next one year The EPS led AIADMK will be focusing on encouraging the Tevar community to be a part of the current AIADMK and that will be the focus area he added that's all i have for you today on this edition of state draft do tune in to this space to see more such in depth stories i'm akshaya nath senior assistant editor for the print